Well, I'm standing in front of yet another electric car, but this one's just a little bit special. This is Audi's very first electric car, the Audi e-tron, here in Sportback. Now, what makes this different and what makes this special isn't really electric, it's mainly because it's an Audi, but also it's some of the technology involved in both the electric car and some of the fancy stuff about this. These mirrors, for example, they're not real mirrors. It's a camera pointing backwards with virtual mirrors inside. I'll show you that during the review. But under the, under the bonnet here, under the car, the battery cell is very special. It's a range of different modules that can be individually interchanged and repaired if needed. But most importantly, very high-tech cooling goes on so that the charging capabilities of this car are better than almost any other electric car. Because of the way the battery and the charging center is cooled, it's able to charge faster for more continuous periods of time. And that gets you 80% battery in 30 minutes, 45 minutes for a full charge. So the Audi e-tron comes in kind of two battery specifications, 55 and 50 with 95 kilowatt hour battery and a 71 kilowatt hour battery. And in an SUV and a sports back. Let's hit the road. After 500 meters, lead the roundabout at the second exit. Oh, well, this is very weird. Very weird. Um, not because it's an electric car, but because of the mirrors. Straight up, the mirrors are, are dauntingly different. Okay, I've got this little screen here, which is showing me the view from that camera. But I'm used to looking out there, not down there. So it's, just, it's a bit to get used to with the virtual mirrors straight off the bat. Please leave the roundabout at the second exit. Oh, they love a roundabout in Canberra, don't they? Oh, Burley Griffin loved a roundabout. I'm like four minutes into this drive and um, still in the city streets of Canberra. Uh, I just feel like I'm driving a normal Audi. Um, and I feel like I'm driving a car and testing these virtual mirrors, not testing an electric car. Um, and I think that's a testament to what Audi have done here. They've built an Audi with an electric drivetrain. Center of gravity though, can absolutely feel very low. And I, that's one of the great things about an electric car with that battery underneath. So we're out on the open road and I think before we look at the specifics of the car, let's look at what this car means to Audi. And there's really one fitting place to do that. It's a wind farm. Um, a little bit of drama. I was meant to stop at one of the turns, meet someone, but there was no one there. Anyway, so we found them and then the other guy behind me just drove on. <laughs> But this is the coolest thing I've done in a very, very long time. We are literally in a wind farm. Oh my God, it's so cool. Like, I'm under a friggin' windmill, baby. I'm putting the oh, sunroof open so I can see it. That, that blew on the camera. So you think, why would you stop at a wind farm when you're reviewing a car? Well, obviously an electric car, all green, this is a, a green power source, but it's more than that for Audi. This is the source of Audi Australia's green energy from 2021 onwards. As a company, they've made a commitment to have green energy powering their business. And of course, as the owner of an Audi e-tron, you get six years charge Fox included at those public charges, including their ultra fast, which is all powered by green energy as well. The only missing link in the chain for the average owner is how you charge at home. You've either got solar panels for that green or you're not quite green at home, but you can, of course, get green credits at home as well. So the fitting place to look at a green car and a green energy source like this wind farm just north of Canberra. So that's a very noble commitment and I think it's respectable and I think we need to see more big companies taking that commitment in terms of what we're doing in terms of going green. But I want to talk about this car, this electric car. And it could be seen as old hat to even worry about talking about electric cars now. We've had Tesla, we've had Jaguar, we've had Hyundai, we've got them all, we've even got Mercedes. There's, there's a lot of electric cars. The Mini was fun. But I'm just going to say, I think there's a Generation 2 thing happening here. This is like a Gen 2 electric car. Not because of the way it drives or the rapid pace that it has, but because of the battery technology. Now, in the e-tron 55 there's a 95 kilowatt hour battery in the e-tron 50 there's a 71 kilowatt hour battery you're talking a 300 and 400 plus range on each of those respectively 
Um, and that includes city driving and stuff, so that you're getting that full regen and all those amazing things. The physical battery underneath this car is separated into a whole bunch of compartments. It's not unusual, but what's critical is that that battery can be serviced. If they detect a problem with the voltage or the output or the input of any one part of that battery, they can take that part out. So instead of replacing the whole battery, they replace that one part. From a serviceability point of view, that's a really big deal. And it goes a long way towards their, I think it's eight year, 160,000 kilometer warranty for that battery. Um, on top of that, you get six years roadside service, great. And six years access to the ChargeFox network. So I was actually set, set up my phone with my new credit card and everything on the ChargeFox app. And I was gonna tell you how much it costs to charge, but you're never gonna pay to charge this because ownership of this includes charging for six years, which is a big deal. And I think that's, again, to be commended as a part of the kind of ecosystem approach. But again, in that generation two perspective, I think it's critical to know that the battery is also unlike many others in that it is able to be cooled and heated to be maintained at a specific temperature. Now, why that's important is because if you remember, flashback to the Hyundai Ionic, we didn't make it. Which did not make it to Bathurst. That was because in wintry, cold temperatures, electric cars have less range. Now, the other thing is, that when you're charging a battery with massive amounts of power going directly into it from the grid, it can't cope with all that power all that much. So what you get is this kind of charging grid from most cars where they take this peak of a huge amount of electricity input and then it tapers off as they get towards, um, towards full. Because it can't, the battery can't simply cope with the amount of power going into it. What Audi have done is create a battery system through the liquid cooling, there's something like 22 litres of coolant, the battery is able to be cooled while charging, which means they're able to take as much power as they can for, until it's at 80%. So it's really a flat line of power. When they get to 80%, it starts to drop off so that you can reach that full point safely. So it's 80% in 30 minutes, 100% in 45 minutes on an ultra-fast rapid charger. Um, like the Charge Fox, Fox Network offers. Obviously, over, over night and more, if you're at home on zero, you plug it into the wall, it's going to take a long time. Again, I say it every time we talk about electric cars, you do not have the fill-up problem you have with petrol cars when you own an electric car. You take it home, there's uh, a power uh, input on each side of this car at the front, so no matter where you park, how you park, the power point will reach, and you plug it in, and you top it up. You top it up. That's what you do. You don't wait until it's empty and then fill it up. You top it up. This car would probably make it home to my house, but we're going to stop at Goulburn to fill it up because that's the logical thing to do. In terms of performance, this is not a Tesla. Um, there's no ludicrous mode because that's stupid. No one drives like that. But it's oh, almost SQ5-like performance in terms of its rapid acceleration and its overall performance and power. So you're getting a solid performing model from Audi uh, in, in this whole new world. It's sized between the Q5 and the Q7, much closer to the Q7, and they say it's very much like a Q7 in size. It's certainly not a Q7 in size. It's very close, um, and that's why they put it in that sector. Um, it's not in the same segment as the as the Q5, but size-wise, yeah, this is a this is an easy family of five car. There's no issue whatsoever with that. Overall ride handling performance is beautiful, magnificent. I keep forgetting I'm in an electric car because I drove an Audi all the way down here yesterday and this feels just as lovely on the road. The big other advance in terms of car technology are these virtual mirrors, which show me indications when I'm indicating. The indicator appears here. When there's blind spot alert, they appear there as well. And you can actually move the mirror around or the view uh, with your finger and you can do both sides. It's excellent. It just, it's gonna take more than a day to get used to. It's gonna take more than a day to used to looking just a couple of centimeters lower uh, on each side to get that rear view alert. I gotta say, I love it. Uh, I think the price point is excellent. 137 upwards um, is, is great. I think it's a really nice price point. I think the Jaguar is probably the most threatened by this. Uh, the EQC is probably a, 
probably threatened by the mid-range um, e-tron but you know Audi lovers will love this car because it is everything an Audi should be with an electric drivetrain that, that's the only difference um, and Audi should be very proud of what they've done in terms of the battery efficiency the battery technology and overall the fit and finish of this car is mwah, beautiful of more photos and a full review if you want to check it out up at EFTM.com Look, as for these side mirrors, I'm not quite sure. I mean, I love the idea, but maybe it's going to take a while to get used to. Maybe we need a few weeks driving it to understand whether or not your eyes just are looking further down. If you like putting the rear view mirror kind of where your infotainment screen is, you'd, it'd take a while to get used to. Um, a couple of times my hand blocked the right hand mirror because I was driving, but hey, maybe there's something in it. Right now though, it's a generation one technology. It's a first gen and it's very impressive, very cool. Um, but I wouldn't rush out to add it. And I wouldn't take it off if it was optioned.